So, do's and don'ts related to diet are termed as, as I mentioned, pathya, do's and apathya. Although pathya changes as per the individual's prakriti, that is nature uh, or constitution, disease, if person is suffering a particular kind of disease, region, season and bal, the strength of the person and multiple other factors. There are few food articles that are considered as pathya in general for many, uh, for any individual healthy or disease like uh, very popular food in our, in India is khichadi and different regions prepare those with their peculiarity or speciality, but that is like universal food. Ahar parinamam kal means the time required to complete the digestion and transformation of the food. Sufficient time must be given for food to get digested, to get assimilated before we take up the next round of diet. In order to acquire all the benefits from ahar, those benefits are longevity, strength, lustre, nourishment, growth, uh, health and well-being, it is necessary that ahar gets completely digested. That is called prapak digestion and transformed properly into rasadhatu that is called vipak digestion. So, prapak digestion is uh, ahar gets completely digested by the intestine or the stomach and properly transformed into rasadhatu. What are the dhatus? You remember the asthi, majja, rakt, etc. We discussed about six type of dhatus, sorry seven. So, we discussed about seven dhatus which are the basic constituents of the body. How that food which is absorbed by the uh, uh, digestive system is transformed, is converted into different dhatu that is called vipak digestion. Routine and diet to be according to the season, we are going to have more detail on this and it should be also according to the dincharya, the particular time of the day. We mentioned about role of food and agni in the form of oj, tej and pran. So, Ayurveda uh, gives immense importance to the status of agni. Agni is believed to be the mulam, the base, the root of the life like that of ahar. Ahar taken from outside is converted in the form of energy by agni and this energy is responsible for all vital functions of our body. So, agni is critical for one's life. It is the cause of health, nourishment, strength and lustre and that is reflected in ojas, tejas and prana. These are the three dimensions, three aspects, three types rather of life energy. These are the subtle aspect of vata, pitta, kapha. Therefore, it is clear that agni and ahar both impact the life equally in every aspect. So, what are these agni? How it is reflected? It is reflected in prana that is the subtle aspect of vata. It is also reflected in tej, which is subtle aspect of pitta. It is reflected in ojas, which is subtle aspect of kapha. In the balanced form, these life energies are reflected in our day to day life as well. So, when prana is well balanced, we have, we have creativity, adaptability, we are inspired and we are enthusiastic about some idea or some ideals. When Tej is balanced, we are confident, motivated, content and passionate about things. When Oj is balanced, we are relaxed, content, joyful and stable. When Prana is unstable, when the is out of balance, uh, 
we experience a lethargy, we remain unmotivated, uh, we are possessive about things and more like clingy. When Tejas is out of balance, we are more angry, we are more critical, we are judgmental and we are aggressive. When Ojas is unbalanced, we are restless, spacey, anxious and disorganized. So, there is a time for reflection. Look at these qualities and reflect what are the things which you are experiencing in your day to day life, what the balance aspect of these life energies are experienced by you, which are mostly defining your waking experience and then also reflect what kind of restlessness, what kind of unbalance you are experiencing in the life. You need to look at both, we, some aspect might, must be balanced in our life. So, you might be experiencing some of these things and some aspects might be out of balance or unbalanced in the life. What is balanced aspect of your life? that is reflecting that quality of energy is very is, is, is well established in your personality. Uh, and those aspect of unbalanced life which are which you can relate to are reflection of lack of that particular kind of energy. So, am I feeling more angry, am I more critical, more judgmental, more than what is required to be aggressive? Um, or am I the restless person, am I more anxious and disorganized person, am I more lethargic, bit unmotivated, possessive and clingy person. These are the points of reflection. Based on the reflection of the balance aspect and unbalance aspect, we can think about what aspect of energy has to be strengthened in our personality whether prana, tej or oj. And according to that, you can choose your food. In the Dharma Viki pages, it is very uh, clearly explained what are the kind of food which enhances ojas, what is the kind of food which enhances tejas, what is the kind of food which enhances uh, prana. Please have a look at it. And you take up, you set up that experiment by changing diet uh, a bit and then notice that, notice your experience. And with the conscious experience, you can actually manage your life energies and reach to the highest level of potential possible. Let us look at another aspect of food, which is deeply connected to the seasonality. And to understand the Ritu Charya, that is uh, our activities according to season, we need to understand the moment of earth around the sun in one year, in one revolution. So, uh, there are two paths Uttarayan and Dakshinayan. Uttarayan is generally starts with 14th of Jan and it reaches to the 21st of June. So, that part is called Uttarayan. Energy of sun is felt more in, uh, in India and many parts of the world. Then comes Dakshinayan, that Dakshinayan means the energy keep reducing and keep reducing till the time we reach to 14th Jan. Pinnacle of Uttarayan is summer solstice and uh, pinnacle of the Dakshinayan is uh, winter solstice. But earth uh, orbit also has an axial tilt that is why the uniqueness of the seasons happen in different parts of the earth. So, in one year we have one Uttarayan and one Dakshinayan. Uttarayan is also called Adan Kal and Dakshinayan is called Visarga Kal. Six months of the Uttarayan are divided into six Ritus, that is why the term Ritu Charya has come. 
वॉट आर दोज ऋतूज माघ फागन चैत्र वैसाख ज्येष्ठ अषाढ़ दीज आर दिक्स मंथ्स विच आर इन द उत्तरायण काल एंड उत्तरायण काल इज ऑफ सिक्स मंथ्स एंड दिस होल पीरियड ऑफ सिक्स मंथ इज डिवाइड इन टू टू मंथ्स ईच एंड दैट्स वाई सिक्स ऋतूज आर आइडेंटिफाइड डूरिंग दिस टाइम पीरियड Similarly, during the Dakshinayan also six ritus are identified, and naturally each ritu is of two months. So ritus during Dakshinayan kal are Shravan, Bhadrapad, Ashwin, Kartik, Margashish, and Poush. So three seasons in the uh, in the first part of the uh, uh, year during the Uttarayan is called Shishir, Vasant, Grishma. Uh, Three seasons during the Dakshinayan are Varsha, Sharad, Hemant. So Shishir is uh, winter, Vasant is very similar to spring, Grish is uh, summers, uh, Varsha is monsoon time. The so, Sharad is the time between the more cold period and after the uh, uh, monsoon period, and Hemant is again the coldest period of time. So these six ritus. are uh, there in in a year these ritus are connected to the moment of earth around the sun naturally the amount of light being received by earth and all the organism varies and systematically varies across these ritus so the that amount of light which is different differently available to the different organism at different point of time naturally have impact on their anatomy and physiology their uh, their physiological activities are deeply governed by the uh, intensity of the light or availability of the sun duration of the day and night all these things govern the physiological activities so this body the human beings their physiology is affected by ritu and what all vanaspatis what all organisms and food grow during this time is also governed by ritus and the moment of earth and resultant uh, availability of the sunlight and the duration of the day etc so based on this our tendencies change so uttarayan indicates the ascent of sun or northward movement of the sun uh, in this period sun and wind are powerful that's why it is called adan kal this is the period of gradual movement of earth around sun to the position in which the rays of sun fall perpendicularly at 30 degree meridian of north pole on 21st every year and that's why it is called summer solstice the northward journey of the sun from tropic of capricorn to tropic of the cancer happens during this time the sun takes away since the uh, the amount of heat gradually increases during this time it takes away the strength of people and cooling quality of earth it brings increase in the tikkat which is bitter kashaya which is astringent and katu that is pungent rasas taste respectively which brings about dryness in body and reduces the strength during uttarayan season uh, as i mentioned uh, these winter spring and summer occur similarly dakshinayan indicates the descent of the sun or movement of sun in southern direction in this period the wind is not very dry moon is more powerful than sun and it is called a visarga kal this is the period of gradual movement of earth around the sun to the position in which the rays of sun fall over 30 degree meridian of the south pole perpendicularly on december 21st every year and that's why it is called winter solstice the southward movement of sun occurs from tropic of cancer to tropic of capricorn earth becomes cool due to clouds rains and uh, cold winds uh, unctuousness sets in the atmosphere and the amla the sour the lavand the salt the madhur sweet rasas they become prominent so the strength of person enhances during this period and as i mentioned 
During the Dakshinayan, we have monsoon, autumn and late autumn. Because of these seasonality and their deep association with the phys plant physiology and the animal physiology and human physiology, we need to take care of our diet according to the season. And this paper of uh, Thakkar, Chaudhary and Sarkar, they have elaborated very in great detail what should be taken, what should be the ahar during a particular season and what should be avoided in the particular season. For example, the Sushir Ritu, the winter time, jaggery, fats, edible oil, floor product, green vegetable, uh, uh, lesson, uh, haritika meaning uh, uh, turmeric, pippali, these are good food. But during this time, the cold drink and what aggravating drinks like gram, uh, Bengal gram or too much food having sour and bitter, that must be avoided. Uh, puffed rice, etc. also should be avoided. But then come back to the monsoon season and there uh, you can enjoy the old barley, rice, meat soup, sandha, lavan, these things. And uh, different from this season is Hemant, where milk and milk product can be enjoyable and the vat aggravating food like uh, Bengal gram etc. must be avoided again. So, like this, uh, we need to take care of the Ritu Charya. Ritu is the first point of reference about food what should be taken as food. Edible things are so many, but anything edible is not food, not the appropriate food and that consciousness and that understanding must be inculcated.